hi everyone. Thank you for watching. I put in all the work prior to the fight, and the rest goes from there. Do you know what I mean? If the man up says it's your time, it's your time. If it ain't your time, it ain't your time. That's how it goes. Today I'm with Randall Monroe. I think the proudest moment for me was I think Martinez fight. I think I got I got wrote off by everybody really. Who was Commonwealth champion, European champion, English champion, British title challenger, and of course WBC world title challenger. And today we're going to be having a chat about his life and career. That's a lot of belts, man, Randall. I haven't uh, I haven't missed any. Have I, have I missed any? Or is that it? Uh, WBA international as well. WBA International as well. Yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah so we yeah, chuck so. that one in there. That's a lot of belts. <laughs> You've been busy. Obviously, I think all the way through my career, everything was done through hard work and determination. I'm actually going to start with the World Title Challenge. Um, so obviously, 10 years ago now, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah. You went over flies to, by. Uh, you went over to Japan. Uh, by that time, you'd already won, obviously, Commonwealth European, English, um, yeah, WBA, yeah. you know, Challenge for the British. Um, yeah, yeah. But you, you know, you were already, you know, your career was already going very well. Went over to Japan, challenged for the WBC. Let's sort of talk a little bit about that. I mean, for, to start with, what is it like to get a call for a fight as big as that? I mean, how, how does that sort um, of... Well, to be fair, I think for me, obviously, um, I boxed Terrazas just before that um, as a world title eliminator, obviously. Same again, I always question, you, you don't question your career while you're in the career, but you question sometimes after. Obviously, I remember boxing um, Simi Mo Jotu, um, defending my European, and it was meant to be a final world title eliminator then. Obviously, then I got told I had to fight another one, so obviously I bought I fought, um, the Mexican, Victor Terrazas. Um, I stopped him, and then obviously from then it was like, you're now number one manager for the WBC world title. For me, I won't bother where it was because I believed I was good enough to win a world title. And I believed it was my time, do you know what I mean? So I'd say to say to get the call up, I don't think I got the call up. I put myself in that spot, you know what I mean? Obviously, I think all the way through my career, everything was done through hard work and determination. I think the only the only bit of a squeeze I got was the chance to fight Martinez, what gave me the little opening for everything else. But apart from that, I fought my way through everything to get my chance to have a world title fight. Okay, so you can't, yeah, come up the hard way. I mean, and that's, that is one of the things that's, that is inspiring, you know, about your story. And obviously, I mean, the experience um, in Japan itself is something, and I know, I know you've talked about this before, but obviously it must be quite different fighting there than fighting, you know, at home in England or some of the other places that, you know, that you um, fight. Yeah, it was, to be fair. I think the only, the only difference was is they don't really make no noise while you're boxing. It's, it's strange how they don't make no noise while you're boxing, but then when the round's finished, everyone's clapping and making noise. As soon as the round's ready to start, it goes quiet again. As for me, I kind of always, I always looked at it like, even to the fact that a lot of people used to say, do you get nervous before a fight? And I say, the only time I get nervous was walking to the ring. Once I was in the ring, I was comfortable again. So for me, once I got in the ring, it was, it was like, it don't matter where I was fighting. Once I'm in the ring, I'm, I'm comfortable. It doesn't matter where it was, what time it was. We've got to get the work done. Yeah. And then obviously, I mean, that does touch on like your mental preparation, which is something else I, I'd like to talk about. And the reason for that is like in these sorts of interviews, people often talk, you know, very much about the physical training. And I know, you know, you're very, you know, very dedicated um, with your training like that. But what about the mental side? I mean, what is your sort of mentality going into I, fights? I, I used to tell everyone, for me, I never, ever put myself under no pressure for no fights. Never, ever. You know what I mean? I believe that I did everything my trainers asked me. I did everything my strength and conditioning. I did everything my conditioner asked me to do. My nutrition is the left. So my belief was if I weren't meant to win, the man upstairs says it ain't my time. Simple as that. Do you know what I mean? You put yourself under pressure. You kind of, you end up fighting yourself rather than fighting what you're meant to be fighting. So I just used to believe that I put in all the work prior to the fight and the rest goes from there. Do you know what I mean? If the man upstairs says it's your time, it's your time. If it ain't your time, it ain't your time. That's how it goes. Mm. I like that. That's a good way to look at it, actually. I mean, you know. And then, obviously, coming out of the fight, I mean, I know it didn't go your way. Um, obviously, a fighting like that is absolutely an amazing opportunity to, you know, something once in a lifetime. But, I mean, how did you feel coming out of the fight? Because, I mean, I thought, and, and a lot of people thought, you know, you boxed very, very well, but it, it didn't go your way. What was your philosophy sort of afterwards? For me, it was weird because all the fights prior to this one, every, every, even this fight, even though it was in Japan, it was still the same. The only thing was, I think 
when we get in, when we we're in the ring, we're ready to go, and and everyone knows where they used to say Rendell starts slow and then he speeds up. But my my thing was, is Rendell don't start slow. It's that when people can't keep up with the pace, Rendell's slacking. You know what I mean? So they kind of slow down a bit, and I'm still going. Do you know what I mean? So it must have got to about the fourth round now. I'll come back to my corner, and Jay's gone to me. We're ready, ain't we? We're ready, and I says, Yeah, man, I'm ready. Let's go now. Let's 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 give it him. I've gone out for the fifth round, but it was weird because as I've stood up. Both my calves just like went really tight. I've not even come out of the corner. I've just stood up. Both my calves just went really tight. And I was like, what's going on? So when I'm fighting, it was like, you know, like you look at something, you see it, you blink, it's gone. And, and, and that's how it was for me. Every time I seen the shot, I threw the shot, it's gone. And I'm thinking, what's going on? It's like my legs weren't taking me, if you get what I mean. And I'm thinking, what's going on? And I always remember, I come back to the corner. And I even said to Jay, I says, Jay. I don't think I'm going to win, you know, but I ain't going to let him stop me. Simple as. And I didn't. I stuck by it and I, and I pressured. And, I, and like you say, I kept going. I kept going. And my, my legs just weren't, I don't know what it was. It was strange as the, the legs just weren't going. But I always remember after the, after the fight, I used to do a, a, a urine sample after the fight. So obviously I've gone to do my urine sample, but I couldn't go tall it. And I'm, I'm, I'm saying to Jay, I can't go. And obviously, you're getting frustrated now because I'm already, I already ain't happy anyway because I've lost. Then you've got the, 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 the Japanese medical people like trying to tell you go toilet, and you're going, I can't go. What do you want me to do? I can't go. I can't go. So I'm sitting there drinking, drinking, and drinking, and drinking. Till in the end, it must have been about half an hour later, I've managed to go. But as I've gone, it looked like mud water. And I'm like, what's going on here? And then one of the medical team says that's severe dehydration. I'm surprised you ain't collapsed or nothing. But then it kind of made me start to think, is that what was wrong with my legs? Where, you know what I mean? Because like you say, we went there. I think we went there 12 days before. But then you say, was 12 days long enough? Do you know what I mean? Because even like, it was weird how when we even got over there, uh, like obviously Jay and, and obviously my conditioning coach and even Mike, my manager, they was kind of getting that little bit of a jet lag thing. And they said, what are you like? And I'm like, I'm cool. I'm, not, I'm nothing. I'm all right. It's, it feels like normal for me. Do you know what I mean? So was that all the build up where when it's set in for me, it's set in on fight night. Do you, do you get what I mean? Like, yeah. so even, even for that, after that, it was like, I thought, you know what? I didn't win, but I put a good, a, a good mark out there. I box basically one of the pound for pound best out there. I've just gone 12 rounds with him. I've just given him a tough 12 rounds and I was 75% myself. So now is my time that I prove to everyone that I'm good enough to go for it. And I thought, I proved it. I'm good enough. And then I'll never forget, on the plane flight home, Mike Shinfield said to me, Rendell, you've just proved yourself too good for your own good. And I was like, what? And he says, don't worry about it, Rendell. Just leave it at that. And, 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 and it was from there, it kind of makes you start thinking then, that, what's he mean? But then as you start to go on with the career and where you're going and what you're doing after that, you start to realise that a man who's been in the game for so many years has just said something and it makes you realise that what he said is the reality of it is that I've just proved myself too good for any world champions to give me another crack. One of the other questions about it was for me that I had to vacate my Commonwealth, my European title to fight for the WBC world title. Why? I don't know, but same again. You don't question it, do you? You're out there. You're out there to win. You ain't thinking, oh, yeah, no, let's debate about keeping these titles just in case I don't win because your mentality is I'm winning. So I ain't bothered about them because I'm going to be world champion after this. So whatever goes on, goes on with them. Whereas, obviously, it didn't kind of work out. But now I'm in, I'm in this spot now where no one has no reason to fight me. So why are they going to fight me? I'm, 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 I'm out there. I'm not out there for a paycheck. I'm out there to win. Do you know what I mean? So people know that when you box Rendell, he ain't going to just start to slow down when he feels it gets hard because he's getting a good payday. He's coming. Do you know what I mean? And, and that's what I always say. In the whole of my career, not one fight did I, I ever speak to my manager about wages. Not one fight. Even my world title, never spoke to him about it. Not once. Because my dream was to become the best in the world, to become world champion. What money came with it was a bonus. I worked. So my money was going to work. The money what I got from boxing used to go in the bank and say, look, that's for when the days are done and me and my family can have a good time. Apart from that, I go to work, I earn my wages, I live on my wages. That's it. Done.
Very good mentality, man. I mean, just, you know, just personally saying that, no, I, I like it. I mean, because in a lot of these interviews, I've spoken to guys and they're saying, oh, yeah, you know, I took this fight just to get paid and stuff. And I really like that you're, you know, you're going in there with, with, with such a... Such oh, a man, I got, I, I, my start of my career, it was kind of funny because I was, I'll never ever forget it. We, I got a phone call one time and it says to me, and, and, and I was the kind of person, I was very quiet in what I was doing, but I kind of looked and I was, I was a hard guy to get a bit of trust off. But then when I went with Mike and Jay, you know, when like sometimes you get that instant bond with someone as in, right, there's, there's some trust there. And I used to trust them. I get a phone call one day. I'm not saying no names. I get a phone call one day. We've got your fight. I'm like, oh, okay. Then. But I'm thinking, why is this person ringing me? Because Mike's my manager. Why ain't Mike ringing me? Oh, we've got your fight against Action Jackson for this title. And I'm like, okay, then. Uh, super Feather. So I'm like, wait there. I'm not Super Feather anyway. But... What are you ringing me for? So then he's like, we're going to give you 15, 20 grand. So I says, and what's that meant to do to me? Am I going to progress from this? So then I've rang, my, I've rang Mike now and says, Mike, I've just had a phone call about some title fight. And he's like, oh, yeah, don't worry about it. Leave it with me. Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, so I says to, I says to, to Mike, I'm, where are we going from? And he says, Rendell, it's just a money fight. Well, we don't want it, do we? No, we don't want it. Let's leave it. So then we get, I get another phone call off the same person again. We're going to pay you more. And I said to him, look, mate, I go to work. I earn my wages. If you ain't got a fight what's going to progress my career, I'm not interested. They never ran me back again. And that was before I boxed for a European title. So like you say, I think sometimes that's where a lot of fighters get it wrong because they get chucked in for some money and they messed it up. Now I look at it and go, yeah, that 15, 20 grand was, would have been really nice at the time. But I've earned more than that now. By turning that down and looking, I'm after a career. I'm not after money because I go to work. You know what I mean? If, if your boxing career is all about getting paid, like I've always said when everyone always says to me about, carry on, Rendell, you can earn this much money, you're good enough. And I, which I am good enough. I'm not going to lie. I'm good enough to be in there still. But then I always go, right, I could go for a fight tomorrow, 30 grand. I get hurt. I've got to pay a 30 grand to a nurse now to wipe my ass because I can't do it myself no more. Was it worth the money? Not really. Integrity, yeah, I like it, I like it. And, you know, I mean, we've touched on a few fights there because obviously the world title, Commonwealth European. What would you say is, like, is the proudest moment? I mean, was the world title, the, like, the proudest moment of your career or was or was there another fight? Or was the proudest moment of your career never sort of, um, you know, taking, like what you say, taking the money just for the money's sake? I think, I, mean, I, think, I think the proudest moment for me was, I think, Martinez fight. I think I got... I got wrote off by everybody, really. It was only like my close friends around me, Mike and Jay, and obviously, and obviously Maloney, that believed I could win. Do you know what I mean? I always remember that um, Jay came to the gym, he's got uh, into the gym, and he's gone, right, we've been offered a European title fight. I says, okay. He says, against Kiko Martinez. So I'm like, oh, all right, have you watched any video? Because same again, my beliefs is your trainer does the, tra does the, the video watching, and you do what he tells you to do. End of, I didn't used to watch nobody. So he says, he says I says, how much you watched of him? He says, 20 seconds. I'm like, no, wait me 20 seconds. He says, that's all there is where he knocks Bernard Dunn out. So I'm like, okay, all right then. Let's get on with it then. Because I says, I says, okay then. And I says to him, do you think we can win? And he goes, we can win, Rendell. That was enough for me. Let's get on with it. What yeah. training we got to do? I always remember... Maloney came to the gym one time. He goes, right, I've got this perfect sparring for him. If Rendell can move around with this guy, Martinez ain't nothing. So I'm like, who we got then? He's gone, call you Anson. And I'm like, jeez, this guy, I know this guy can eat. I know this guy can eat hard. So I thought, all right then. So I've gone leads for a training session. And all Maloney said to me is, Rendell, just don't let me eat you. Don't let me eat you. So anyway, we're going around. He's got me. And, but you know when someone's got you, and he's like, beep! <laughs> and I'm like, okay then. Well, that's his shot. Mate, I'm all over this fight now. And that, that one shot alone was just the, the, the key to switch me on, like to say, I'm going to become European champion. Because I've just been hit by Carl Johansson, who normally hits people, and they fall over. And yes, he's gave me a little ring in the ear, but I didn't shake, I didn't do nothing. And I think even after that, when he hit with that, I think even Maloney's confidence got so much higher after that sparring. So I went down there to spar with him a few times. And, and from that point on, I was like, this guy ain't got nothing on me, man. I ain't bothered. 
you ain't got nothing on me. And, that, and that's what it was for me. Everyone, like you say, I always remember papers were saying, oh, Sky Sports, I think this fight's a bit early for him. Uh, and I was like, yeah, whatever, man. Let's go out there and prove it. And I proved it because I, I, I beat him up. Yeah, proved everyone wrong, yeah. And, I mean, you mentioned that. I mean, physically, was that one of your, like, what was your, one of your toughest fights? I mean, um, was it the world title fight, was it? I mean... No, Simeon Mojotti was my hardest fight. Hardest fight, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that was meant to be my, my eliminator fight. That was meant to be my elim eliminator for the world title, but then I had another one against Terrazas. I think that was the only guy that matched me pace for pace, strength for strength, for 12 rounds. I couldn't believe it. Because, like you say, all the time prior to that, I'd, like I say, I used to get in and spar with, like, your Oval McKenzie's and people like that. And my engine was, it was, it was, it was on fire. My engine was on it. But, you know, like with people like Oval and things like that, it weren't too much that they used to smack me about. It's like when you're eating something and it don't move, it, it takes it out of you. So when you're doing rounds with people like Carl Johansson, um, Carl Johansson Oval McKenzie, I did Scott Awood many a times. You know, when you get in with a mix of people like that and you're thinking to yourself, geez, these men ain't moving. And then you kind of go, right, I've got this fight now. I've got this. This guy stepped with me toe to toe Round for round, all the way. Normally, me and Jay be laughing by round 10, 11, because it's kind of one of them. We know, you know, when you got that bond with someone, you don't even need to talk because we always knew that the cameras were on us. But, you know, when you give that little smile to each other, like to say, we got this. You know what I mean? By round 10, me and Jay were looking at each other like, shit, is this guy going to stop? You know what I mean? And I always remember we've gone out and Jay's gone. He's round 11 and Jay's really tired now and he's tired. I said, I know he is. I know he is. Round 12, let's go. We got it. Mate, he come at me like a bullet again for round 12 as well. I was like, oh my gosh, what is this? And I was, I, I used to have my, 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 my few friends with me, Carl, Pete, you know what I mean, Pike, Nogi, all, all, they were all my very close friends who followed me right from the start. They came to Japan, they came everywhere. You know what I mean, all them guys. And we used to go out for a little bit of a breakfast in the morning. I remember going for the breakfast in the morning. The lads were like, Rendell, why are you not eating though? I said, I can't eat, man. My jaws are hurting. I'm, I think I'm going to go hospital just to make sure my jaws are all right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, by far, my hardest fight ever. Yeah. All right. And what about, I mean, some of your later fights when, you know, because then later on in your career, obviously, mo you know, moving up in weight and everything like that. And you had some some tough fights, you know, Lee Selby, you know, two with Scott Quigg. I got, I, got, I got robbed. I don't care what anyone wants to tell me. Against Lee Selby, I got robbed. Okay. Got robbed. I'm, I'm an honest guy. Like I said, I don't lie to no one. When I... When I, when I come back from Japan, I think then I kind of got into this idea that I knew what was happening. Obviously, we, we went for a few promoters to try and get big fights. We, we moved from Maloney to um, Ricky Atten. Obviously, Ricky Atten, I kind of looked at it. He's going with Ricky Atten. He's got all the, all the connections with top rank. You know what I mean? He's good friends with Golden Boy, you know, De La Hoya and people like that. So I thought, my, this might open the gate. So I went for a meeting with Hatton, and Hatton was like, right, I've got your WBA title straight away if you want it. And then we can go from there. So I was like, yeah, let's get on with it. So I've took that. I've won that. So I'm back. I'm back there again. So then it was like, right, I've got a fax from top rank for a fight. So I'm excited now. I'm like, come, let me go and get Mike. When I fetch Mike, I'm from Mike. Drive up to Manchester. And then, and then um, Ricky's gone to me, Rendell, it ain't good news. So I'm like, what do you mean, man? He says, it ain't good news. And it said on the facts, have you got anyone to fight Yoga Arce for the WBC world title in Mexico apart from Rendell Monroe? And he says, you are the most unwanted fighter there is right now. So I'm like, okay then. So all that excitement was just like a bit of a crash. You know what I mean? So then it was like, the only person left is Scott Quick. This is it. So then it was kind of like one of them, you know where, like I was saying earlier, I never used to feel under pressure with no fights. I never used to stress myself, but I kind of knew that this is the fight. If I don't win this fight and I don't win it good, it's over for me. Boxing, I might as well walk away because I'm not going to get the opportunities. So when I say I was ready for this fight, I was ready. I was, I was fired up, everything. It's the first time. Everyone used to say, Rendell's calm, collective. I remember someone said something to the weigh-in and I tried to jump over the barrier to get him. That's how fueled up I was. And even Jay turned around and says, I've never ever seen you like that, Rendell. What was all that? I says, mate, I'm on it. I always remember the fight started. I'm, I don't care what anyone's saying. I'm going to stop this kid. I was, I, was, I was on fire. I was doing what I was doing. Next minute, 
I get headbutted. Try to say it was a clash of heads. Weren't no clash of heads, it was a headbutt. If you watch it in slow motion, you can see he pulls my head down onto his head. Split my eye. It happens, doesn't it? It's life. It's one of these. But now it's kind of like, it's, you know, like all the fires just kind of slowly going out now, like to say, that's it, Rendell. It's, you're finished. And I always remember, even, yeah, you always remember after the fight, I was bleeding, bleeding, bleeding. And I always remember Mike, Mike used to always say to me, because he was my coachman, he used to say to me, if, you, if you're bleeding, it's not a bad cut. If it, if it don't bleed, normally it's a bad cut. But if you see the fight, when it, when it, when it, bang, it's like, I'm in agony, like, yo, what was that? All I remember, it was, the blood was dripping, I could feel it dripping off my chin, covering my face. Then the ref's like, kind of like, looked at me and go, whoa, 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 stop, 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 stop. So I'm thinking, wait there, he's bleeding, so it can't be bad, it must be a little nick or something. It's going, no, 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 no. So then he took me over to Mike, and Mike's like, looked at it, gobsmacked, and gone, no, no, done. So the fight stopped. So then I always remember, I'm still, because I've not seen it now. So I'm thinking, well, what, what is it? I always remember the guy from the Leicester America, one of the photographers was there. It's like, oh, can I take a photo of the cut as we were going to do an interview? And he's lifted up his lens. And I've seen the reflection of my eye on the lens. And I was thinking, boy, which one's my eyeball in? <laughs> that's, how, that's how bad the cut was. And then I always remember sitting down on the, on the, on the stool next to Scott Quick. Look, at the end of the day, we're, all, we're, we're both in there to win. You're on fire. And I always remember he turned around and says, I think I was going to win. Well, I forgot I was on live TV because I'm like, what are you ever on about? You're going to win. Mate, let's get back up in there. I've looked around as well and says, put some sellotape on his frigging eye and let's get back in there and get it dealt with. You know what I mean? And then he got Jay like, Corendo, calm down, calm down, calm down. But I think because that was the fight where I felt under pressure where I had to do something. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, from that point on, it was like, I know it's done now. You know what I mean? It's kind of one of them. Mike and Jay were like, Rendell, don't stress, man. Don't stress. Don't stress. Obviously, I went and see my physio because I used to have a good uh, physio man. Um, you know what I mean? Who, who, who used to help me out at Ashley Clinic. And he look, he see me cut my eye and he says to me, Rendell, as soon as you get back, in the morning, come and see me. We'll have a look at the eye. So I've gone to see him. He's looked at the eye and he's gone, don't worry, man. We get you back fighting again. I'm like, you sure? He says, yeah, man, we're getting back fighting. So by now, I've got that little buzz back because, because the fight was a draw, there was going to be a rematch. So I'm like, cool. But then my problem was, is, and this is one of the biggest mistakes I made in my whole career, that I always believed that the more you train, the fitter you get, the stronger you get. And as I learned, that sometimes the more you train, you burn yourself out. So I was getting ready for this rematch from the, from the get-go. You know what I mean? Before they even talk about the rematch, I'm already out running, I'm already doing it. And I, I always remember saying to someone that I think that the point I knew that I must have been too, you know, too fit too early. I was doing 12 rounds with Jay McDonald and he was going to defend his world title eight weeks before my fight. Eight weeks before. I was doing 12 hard, solid rounds with Jay McDonald. Man's a world champion. Now, you kind of look at that and think, yeah, but that's good. But then you think, no, it ain't. Because if you're doing 12 rounds eight weeks before the fight, how much fitter can you get before you burn yourself out? When we had the rematch, I couldn't make the weight. I think I'd just overdone it, you know, put so much pressure on myself, overdone it, couldn't make the weight. I made the weight, stripping naked. But obviously, unless you're a boxer, you wouldn't know. When you go over that limit, you kind of go wake up next day and you're thinking, the body just still ain't right. It, it ain't happening. Do you know what I mean? So you've got, I've gone in there trying but I think deep down in my mind I kind of knew and like you were saying the mental side of boxing I tell everyone 75% of you winning a fight is all about your mental you can be a fit you can be strong you can do what you want if that mental side ain't right it ain't happening do you know what I mean so from that point on it was like oh I've had enough of boxing now I'm done same but then the problem was is me and Jay had this little agreement that he tells me when it's time to retire not me say when it's time to retire because I always believe that your trainer will always know when you're climbing the ladder and when you're falling back down. Do you know what I mean? So then it was like, I started coming back to the gym again. And he's like, what are you doing here, Rendell? I says, I don't think I'm finishing, OJ. And he's like, okay then. All right then. That's good. So then we start training again. We start doing what we're doing. Start sparring with the heavier lads now. And even the, the, the lads, the heavier lads were saying, Rendell, you're hitting harder now. You, you, you feel stronger than you used to. The, the, them couple of pounds weight what you're putting back on, he's making it good. So I've come back now, but I'm coming back as a super feather. 
Yeah, so I'm coming back at nine stone four. I was fine at eight ten. I was coming back at nine four. Same again. I always say I did it the hard way. My fight they got said for me was, we got your fight if you want it. Andy Townsend, the knockout kid. Me, I'll fight anybody. I'm not one. Let's get it on. In his backyard, like I did with everyone. I went to everyone's backyard. Let's get it on. Me, I think he won one round out of ten. One round out of ten. Yeah? I was like, Rendell's back, me. We on it. Nine stone four, we on it. And I'll never forget, someone come in the change room and says, that looked like the old Rendell Monroe there, but the problem is, you're going to struggle because this is managing for this, this is managing for that, that's champion, he won't fight you. And then you're kind of like, ah. But then, you know, you know, at the time, you're on the hype now, so you're like, boom, 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 let's get it on. Then, a month or two down the line, we get some phone call from Matchroom. Do you want to fight Selby? I'm like, but I don't want to do feather now. And then you're kind of looking, thinking, I'm 30 odd years old. There ain't much time left. It's for the British European title. Do we take it? Yeah, let's take it. Cool then. So, so then now I've gone from making eight stone 10 to making eight, um, nine stone four to now making nine stone. Making nine stone was like trying to make eight stone 10 again, you know, because I was one of them that did everything properly by the book. So I was putting proper weight on. I was putting muscle on. Do you know what I mean? So going back down them four pounds, I could tell. But it is what it is. I've made the weight. No dramas, no problems. I remember, I've never seen, I, when I boxed big the second time, I struggled to make the weight. So I know what it's like to, make, to struggle to make the weight. When Selby got on the scales that day, I said to Jay, I says, mate, I never, ever, ever seen anybody make weight so bad. I'm going to stop this kid. If we can get into later rounds, I'm going to stop this kid. I'm telling you. So Jay was like, he looked bad, didn't he? I said, mate, I've never seen no one look. He looked like if he put his head down, he'd fall over. That's how bad he looked like he made the weight. So I'm like, we got this. Anyway, the fight's on. We're going, we're going. Must have been around round five or whatever in. And I'm backing myself in the corner because I know that the way he looked, he ain't doing 12 hard rounds. No way. So I'm backing myself in the corner, letting him think he's on top of me, letting him swing away, pop a little shot, go back in the corner, pop a little shot. No worries. I know the game plan. So anyway, he's come back. I've gone back in the corner again, let him start slinging a bit. Then he's done this little alley thing with his hand. So as he's done that, I've popped him on the nose. He's done it again. I popped him on the nose again. Next minute, the ref's come in and gone, I'm stopping the fight. I'm like, what are you on about? So I'm stopping the fight. You're not throwing enough punches. I'm like, mate, go away with it, man. Go away with yourself, man. You're having a laugh. Are you serious? You're going to stop the fight because you're saying I'm not throwing enough punches. Is that the excuse you're going to bring to me? And that was the point when me and boxing fell out of love. That was the point right there. Because even if you watch the rematch, you even see that I'm saying to the ref, what, I've even gone over to Mike and them looking like, is, is this guy serious? In the middle, when they, you know, when they're announcing who the winner is, you've even seen me there, look at the ref, say something to the ref, because you see me go, are you serious? Then I've stood forward, looked at Selby and gone, is this guy having a laugh? And that was the point then where I fell out of love with boxing. I thought, you know what? If that's the way you got to have me, all the hard work, all the graft I put in, that's the way you're going to have me. Let it be. And then, like you say, you get the odd call again, or do you want to fight Warrington? Then you're kind of like, yeah, man, I can do it, man. I can do it. Let's stay motivated. Let's get in it. Let's do it. And like we were saying at the start, like I said to you at the start, 75% of the game is in the head. Yeah, don't care how fit, how strong you are. Because I was super fit. I was super strong. But for some reason, it just weren't, it weren't Rendell in there when I was fighting Warrington. And then I always remember Jay said to me, Rendell, when I've gone back in the corner, he says, it's not you, Rendell, man. Let's leave it from here. And I was like, you said it. Call it done. And that's why I broke down on Sky because that was the time I really knew that the sport I loved, done, finished. Do you know what I mean? But something's happened for a reason and it is what it is. Yeah, well, that, that does lead me to obviously, you know, where you're going from here, Randall, because one of the things I'd like to talk about, and re you know, really one of the last things with this, is obviously, you know, your community, because obviously, I know that you're doing a lot of good work in your community, you had the honorary award, and you for, for your city, yeah, that's it. putting yeah, it on yeah, the map, yeah. um, yeah, that's yeah. what they call it, but you know what I mean, and so that obviously, yeah, that's, yeah. that's a big <laughs> achievement. And I yeah. know working with, with the troubled youth, uh, and working with your disadvantaged, and you're doing a lot of work like that now. Can we talk yeah, about yeah. 
bit because obviously one of the things is i mean you put your city on the map i mean you know that's that i mean that goes without saying almost you know what i mean but um the impact on your community i mean do you think like you inspire like in your in your sort of area and everything like that uh, yeah, well like you see, for me i kind of look at it as in i was a kid that grew up i didn't like school i went to school obviously my dad being from the Caribbean came here with no education. So the biggest thing for my dad was, you need to learn, you need to learn, you need to learn. So it was kind of one of them for me. Like That was the, the, the drilling. Go to school, go to school, go to school. If I didn't go to school, I got more work at home off my dad than I didn't go to the school teachers. So I made sure I went to school just to do as little work as possible. But then you kind of realise that not everyone is for school. Do you know what I mean? I went on to do good things outside of school. I'm a, I'm, I'm a hands-on guy, you know what I mean? I go on building sites, labouring and helping friends. I go, You know what I mean? It's kind of not everyone. So at the time, I used to go into a lot of schools doing talks with a lot of kids because I was looked at as, all right, then someone who's been there, done it, and he's coming out on top. And and then it was kind of a thing for me where, like I says, me and a guy, I says, I'd love to start doing my own thing, working with kids who are coming out of school or classed as bad kids because they don't like school. Do you know what I mean? So... I set up triple skills uh, in the community with a friend of mine, Graham Chambers, and, and, and working with kids that are excluded from mainstream school and some kids that are partly excluded. Do you know what I mean? So it's kind of trying to tell them that, mate, I'm, I'm your prime example here. School ain't for everybody. It don't work for everybody. Not everybody's the same. Do you know what I mean? I, I was that kid at school when the teachers, oh, you're going to turn out to be a nobody. Blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? And I always, I always laugh and joke about it now, but I always say, don't care what belts I've got, I've got every award there is in boxing from Boxer of the Year to Fight of the Year. I've got them all, you know what I mean? Voice Magazine Awards, Break for the Year Awards, um, Leicester City, Leicester Mercury's, Leicester City Sportsman of the Year twice. You know what I mean? I've got them all. Nothing's better than being called from your own school and saying, could you hand out some awards for some kids, knowing that that was one of the schools where a lot of the teachers turn around and says, if you don't start learning, sort of Rendell, you're going to turn out to be a nobody. To be able to go back and say, well, I'm a somebody. Yeah, Rendell Monroe is a somebody. He didn't do it through the books, but he did it another way. And, and he's trying to teach the kids that, yes, you can still do it, just doing it a different way, and it is possible. Do you know what I mean? So I do a lot of community work. Now, I always say I'm Mr. Charity because anybody calls me up to do any charity work, I'm first on the list. I've done charities for Loros. You name it, I've done it all. You know what I mean? I've, um, I'm a patron of the Bodie Hodges Foundation good good friend of mine who lost a child so um struggled with the the, the bereavement of a, of a child so you know what i mean i do a lot of work for everybody and i always believed that you know what i mean if i make a million pounds and somebody else is starving i ain't doing the right job am i you know what i mean my yeah. thing is, is if we can all feed we all live you know what i mean it's like you say even last like did the, the interview the other day with monte prime examples there they rang up the shinfield gym uh, have you got a southboard to spar with? He's like, oh, we've got Rendell Monroe here. And they're like, you're joking. They came. And that day I went and sparred with them. I was going to the Great North Run the following day. So I went I went up to Jay's gym, the Shinfield's gym, sparred with Monte and another young lad there, and then went straight from there to Newcastle to run the Great North Run the following day. Then then a few days, uh, uh, when I finished sparring with him, they said, oh, if we could sort some accommodation, would you come over to Scotland and, and spar? So I'm like, yeah, of course I would. So I went and did the Great North Run one weekend. And then a, a weekend after that, I went up to Scotland and stayed over there spying with Monty and that. So I'm, I'm, I'm a guy who's like, like you say, now I've took my trainer's license and things like that. And I always say, my dream was to become a world champion. I touched the dream. My new chapter, my new dream is, I want to be able to take someone to be able to hold their dream. And with the kids of today, I want to be able to work with the community today to say that not everyone goes down the right road, but you can still achieve. We all have to make mistakes to believe what we want out of life. It's as simple as that. You know what I mean? No, I always say a lot of people, if you look at my amateur career, you'd have never guessed I'd have done what I did. I always remember my first, my first boxing pro fight. I used to say to Jay, I can't wait to get in the boxing news. You know, I can't wait to get in the boxing news. I went and brought the boxing news the following week. And the statement said, Rendell Monroe, de Monroe's debut. I don't think he'll be around very long. Fighting like that, I give him three fights before he's knocked out and he walks away from the sport. And he was like, okay then, all right then. When I won my European title, the same reporter who did that same first fight, I, I kept that piece of paper in my, in my bag. And I said to Jay, go and show my man this report here. And he went and showed it him. 
And he wrote in that following boxing news how I brought the thing back, showed him, and how that drive me because I was a guy that if you told me I couldn't do nothing, trust me I could do. It. You know what I mean? I was I was that guy. You know what I mean? I believed that hard work does what it needs to do. Like you say, Jay would be like, Rendell, we got a five mile run today. You reckon you can manage it? What do you mean? I've already gone. Everyone better catch me because I've got to do my five miles, mate. I ain't bothered. You know what I mean? And like Jay told me, I heard him tell someone the other day, Rendell could do 12 rounds of sparring and at the end of the round, I say, Rendell, I want 50 burpees. No questions asked. I do my 50 burpees because I'm going to be the champ. You know what I mean? That was it, straight. I mean, that's, that's everything. Do you know what I mean? I mean, that's we covered some fantastic stuff. And to box cool about it, it's like you answered some questions I had without me even asking them, you know? So, so a nice one, nice one. No, honestly, yeah, that's, that's class, that is. That's top class, yeah. But no, we've got, and particularly, I mean, you know, what we've just talked about there with everything in the community is, I mean, that's the idea that, like, the vision that I have, like, for this interview in, um, in itself, do you know what I mean? So, so yeah, I mean, like I say, mate, I, I appreciate you, taking the time to have a chat with me today. Like, I really, no, I really like, do. Any, any, any time, any questions, I'm a, mess, I'm a message away, mate. Any time, mate. I'm, 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 a re, I'm a realist, you know what I mean? I did boxing because I, leaned, I loved it. I didn't box because I wanted to get paid. I didn't box because I wanted to have my name in the lights. I boxed because I wanted to prove that I was the best at something. And I tried my artist, and now my thing is, is if I can pass that, even the drive onto somebody else, even like you say, with the community of work I do now, with the kids I work with, I'm one of these guys who go shop and we're going shop and the one of the kids is not coming and I'm like, why are you not coming? Oh, my mum ain't giving me no money. Mate, come man, me buy you a sandwich, man. Come man, don't worry about that. You know what I mean? And that, that's how I believe we, we should all stick together, man. We're all one. Let's, if so, someone can bounce off someone and someone can bounce off someone to achieve something, we all win together. You know what I mean? I tell everyone now, I, got, I buy the lottery every week. My national lottery every week was it the Euro Millions. And I don't buy it because I want to win for me. Because I'm comfortable. I'm not rich. I still have to go to work, but I'm comfortable. I want to win because I want to build my own school. I want to build my own school and, and, and show people that the way schools are run right now is not for everybody. And trust me, when I win the lottery or when someone steps up and goes, Rendell, I'm a millionaire, I'm willing to help you. I will have the best school there is because I'm going to teach kids about real life, how it goes. And I want every kid who comes to my school to leave my school with a trade of some type. I want boys and girls. I don't just want boys. So a trade, a PT, a scaffold, a hairdresser, you name it. I want them to leave. So when they're leaving from me, they've, they've got in their head that they've got a trade. Whether they want to work for someone or whether they want to start their own business, they've already got the tools to do it. Because not everyone is good at sitting down doing spelling competitions and Grammar, grammar competitions and times tables because I wasn't that kid. But if it comes to talking about ways of life and how to do it, I'm your man. If you want me to put it on a piece of paper, then you better get me to talk to someone and let them put it on the paper because I can't do it. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I like it. I mean, I, I love the message, man. And, it, you know, even on a personal note, I mean, it's a little bit off topic, but I had, like, pretty much the same experience in, in school. Um, like, because not everyone's academic, you know. I mean, I, I, yeah. I, I've, I've said that for so, such a long time, and it's, it's really cool to hear it, you know what I mean, to hear it back. So, yeah, of course, yeah. man. Like you say, I'm, I'm your, I'm your hands-on guy, you know what I mean? My yeah. mates laugh because I've been on, even when I was fighting, my mates used to scream me up and says, oh, Rinda, were you coming help me today? I'm like, where you at? Oh, this building's site. I need a labour. My labour's gone for the day. Yeah, man, I used to just work on the labour inside my order and people used to be like, is that Rinda Munro? Lifting bricks? Yeah, man, why not? Why not? You know what I mean? Why not? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's it. Well, like I say, thank you again, mate. I do, I do appreciate Anytime, it. Anytime, buddy.